But mm -hmm. here you are, say, take some actors who've just come out of a school, they've come out of Ryerson or you know, yeah. Alberta, or they've come out of NTS, and they, you want okay. to oh, okay. encourage you them say, to find yeah. that rule-breaking okay. and not that kind well, of... Right. Well, you don't say rule-breaking at that point, but you say the power of the state, this moment. You have the power of this moment. You can change, define, invent anything you want in this moment, and if you find the connection into it, you will be able to share that with an audience, which will actually start the beginning of what I learned later was making theater magic. I didn't, you know, uh, the mystic, the magic part didn't come until a bit later, but I think it was there already. I just didn't have a vocabulary to understand how it came in from another part. So there seems to be a fault line here. There's the magic, because the magic of theater is a great phrase, right? The magic yeah. of theater, which uh -huh. we see it in the farm show, you see it in Maggie Pierre, yeah. you see it in Le Musée yeah. Anglais, you yeah. see it. Yeah. But I also see it in Ibsen, I also see it in yeah. George Walker. Mm -hmm. But one is uh, the, the part of the theater which is your um, eclectic? Uh, well, partly that. Try oh, I roll would say in a room and shake it up? I know, uh, I think it actually has to do with... As opposed to the professional sitting down with the rules and the stage managers and the techniques and the radas and the lambdas and the... Well, and, it's very and kind of spinning that together. Now there seems to be a two sides, right? No, Both no, good! No, well, no, no, the, the, the interesting point on this magic and this, I think it had to do with the time and place, is that at that point Basically, uh, we had to make our theater our own in a very, very interesting and important way. Right. And it seemed that that was very, very hard to do with you know, relying on somebody else's magic. You're talking about the colonialism, America. No, well, or American it doesn't, it doesn't British, matter which uh, is, it, well, or you know, you can even go as Artaud said masterpieces were tyrannizing us. He didn't have to be. You, you know, he, he didn't have to go to uh, England to say English theater was tyrannizing, or for a German theater, or Norwegian theater was tyrannizing France. He just said masterpieces were doing it because people were falling down in front of them and not finding the, ma the power, the fear, the emotional complications and dynamics that you would find in, in important theater. So what I would say to this actor is, okay, you, Power, as they'd say nowadays, right? But you can do it. You can do it all here. I, you know, and somehow maybe I can help you do that. And whether it's with new words or borrowed words, I, in the end, I don't care. I mean, it's it, it's the complication with borrowed words is that sometimes you cannot get those ideas away from them, and so you borrow the ideas as well. So you get okay. productions that have, including the techniques and the approaches, that have already got the stamp. And it's sometimes very hard. And, and I think actually for uh, actors, well, the kind of Canadian actors that I seem to get identified with, it's hard for them to wear these borrowed clothing, whereas it seems interesting, exciting, and, mm -hmm. well, at that point, groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. to discover that you have the power to do this. So, but, but the David Foxes and the Miles yeah. Potters... Yeah, David very... tried to do Stratford too. Right. I mean, we all, we, you know, they, we, they fell into Passmore not because it was this glorious, brilliant thing and that I was this, uh, or Martin Kinch were, the, you know, were these leaders that could talk you into doing anything. No, they came because they had stuff that was not being uncovered and discovered elsewhere. But I think the, you know, the essence of it is, uh, I guess, this opportunity for a complete creation, or even a need for that. Because if it isn't there, it looks awful. If you don't create in that empty space. See, oh, this would be the one little you, debate. Sorry, you we mean... could go back on the debate about borrowed words. When you do an Ibsen, even if you don't come up with a really good way, way of doing it, even if it's a kind of a warmed over piece, people can always go away from it with the great words, the master did this, this happened, that happened, and oh, I remember reading about a production that did that. But when you're doing it, when you're just going with that open space, this stage, it either works and the audience goes with you, or there is a void 
and there seems to be something painful, really interesting. This is fascinating. The more I watch it and the more I see movies and stuff like that, the degree to which um, a theater experience that isn't working can be painful. And the tolerance we have for bad movies is very interesting parallels. You know, it's like, yeah. Why can we go and sit through so many bad movies? You know? yeah. And one bad play can injure us to such a point that we might not even go out and see a new play for a, you know, six months. Why? I don't know. I Come guess it's on, because, well, it has to do with, I guess, well, I guess a, going, <laughs> here's one for you. Okay, going to a theater and having a new experience is like finding a girlfriend. And somehow you pour all your hopes, your aspirations, or boyfriend. So I don't want to be sexist about this. But uh, okay, uh, you, you point all your aspirations into this thing here. And boy, it can, it can lift, it can be exciting. But if there's a betrayal in it, the betrayal is huge. And you know, we were jokingly saying, and that's why you can talk about blood on the floor. Because there, yeah, there is. I mean, there's somehow you've opened a pact. Mm -hmm. You've opened a pact with the actors. You've opened a pact with the audience. And it doesn't happen. And the betrayal is huge. Uh, and bad films? Bad films? They, they, somehow or other, uh, people can make careers out of bad films. But why are we not so betrayed when we go to a bad film? I, I think we are only if they're Canadian. True. <laughs> I'll never see another film in my life, Canadian film in my yeah, life. Because yeah. Canadians can't make films. Yeah, let but me go see and see a bad film made from somewhere else. Yeah. 